Is Mitch dead? Yeah, he's probably dead. Yeah, he's dead. Oh, and I killed three people, and you're like, yeah, but he's going to die. Watch. You got the map right, though, Mitch. You're 100% for maps. So the question mm. is, whose pick Let's is it going to Let's go, baby. Let's go. So, is it Liquid's pick? No! Ooh. Okay, that doesn't matter. I, I, but team picks and map picks are separate. So, it's BBL's map pick. I got that wrong. It was, a, it was a guess. But that is actually very brave because they've just gone in. They've picked the most played map uh -huh. for Team Liquid where they've got a 73% win rate, where they absolutely trashed Vodafone Giants yesterday, 13-4, yeah. where they beat Fun Plus Phoenix. Like, this is a very brave pick. Uh, the last two games, and especially that Fun Plus Phoenix one, the 13-11, mm -hmm. that scares me that they've come through and had the confidence to pick that, because I presume BBL have done the research on their opponents on this one. They're, I mean, Liquid are one of the only teams that there is actually a lot of data out there on how they play. Well, this is what I was saying about Liquid. To me, Liquid is the most predictable team, but they're still hard to deal with because of the individuals on it. Like, they have setups where you can see what they're doing. You go, oh, okay, this is a setup from the previous round or the round a couple of rounds ago, yeah. you know? Like, they have some big tells to what they're lining up to get done. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can have defaults, but... For me, they don't do enough of the selling fakes at times, and that's when you see them get into a spot of bother against some of the more stronger teams. Now, against teams like BBL, teams against Giants, they should be able to just run over them, right? We just look at that scoreline that Liquid had yesterday. Yesterday's game from Liquid was the record breaker until this 13 0. Well, for Liquid, 59% of the rounds on the defensive side is what they win. It is a slight favor towards it, but they're pretty Does much. Does that include their fish stats or just them as Liquid, though? That includes their fish stats. Oh, this is a nice spot. Right, that's good to know. That is good to know. So for this team, um, they're they're very well balanced. One thing you'll notice about Haven in general is that teams will get a lot of rounds on the attacking side. Mm -hmm. And it, as long as you can play a good attack, you can end up spreading your opponents out fairly thinly if they're not able to grab that info and, and yep. get the early stacks. And on the back of that, you generally Come run into on. a site where there's very few players and long rotations from the teammates, which mm -hmm. means getting the spike planted is usually the easiest part. As long as you're not just being hit by an operator early on, which luckily isn't a problem when you come into the pistol round. A couple of pistols for BBL upgraded as they look to move quickly in towards the A site. They dash across from CNET as he's got the control. And I like this from Liquid. They immediately just bail out of there, not over committing and taking a fight that would be less than favorable. Instead, Solkus just throws the nade, runs away, and they're happy to play a 5v5 retake. And I'm down for something like this, just retaking with what Liquid have to offer, right? Just how Scream can play it out as well using the Rainer is very strong. Now, Lego's going to get a slight bit of information on how many people are outside that site. Crypt is going to try and sneak his way around window. He's not made any noise just yet, but they're all going to push out together. You're going to look at the timing here from Liquid. This is what it's all going to be about. The boom bot goes, they follow it up, and they're all starting to go together. Cryptic's poach out a window. They want to cause confusion here. Scream's getting their kills. Scream's onto another. This is looking good, and he's not done yet. All the kills go in the way of Liquid. Lego tries to fight back. Oh, and they put the wall down. Scream straight up on that defuse, and it is not going to work out for BBL. The job is done. The defenders have won, and it's 1-0 for Liquid to open up the game. Lincoln Cryptics made a great reaction there as soon as the wall broke. They just ran in front. They're ready to yeah. be the meat shields and allow the defuse to go down even if they lose those aim duels. No matter what, I think Liquid were going to be winning that one. And as they take it 1-0, to zero, BBL, it sucks. You, you had the, the spike planted. Obviously not an advantage. And that is all down to Soulcast and how he initially held that site. If he overcommitted and stayed there, they were screwed. He would have probably died. Maybe he gets a kill, but probably not because he's facing like 2 or 3v1. And we didn't touch on this, right? Look how close that was for the spike blowing up as well. Time oh, was yeah. really starting to tick away. That was a well-executed, well-timed push from Liquid. They knew when to charge. They knew when to go forward. And this is what I mean about Liquid. The structure, the strategy, it's there. Now, Sneed see that's being sneaky. Did they, they should have spotted it. They definitely would have heard him. I'm hoping they understand where he's gone, but... Oh, look, Link's getting headshots again. Oh, he didn't get a headshot. Oh, no, there's another one. So, three kills, most of them headshots. So, he just casually gets the ace, and three of them were headshots. Of course, Link just doing Link's things. I even tweeted at him today. I was like, Link, your headshot percentage, mate, is just becoming ridiculous at this point. Like, yep, and here he goes again. He's just back to his old tricks. So, one thing that I'll point out uh, for Liquid in the pistol round, actually, they got a 3K on Reyna on screen, right? Yeah. And as soon as he finds the kill, the second kill, when he feels like he's under threat, he can pop the invulnerability and just roll 
run through and grab the information. I think that's something that a lot of people don't understand about the Reina play, that it's not just a duelist. I know technically it's categorized mm -hmm. as that, but you can't just interchange and go, oh, put a jet in there, put a raise in there. That's not how it works. No. You provide flashes for your teammates, and when you t get into fights, you have a disengage, but also an information gathering tool. And you'll notice when he went in vulnerable, he's immediately swinging wide on long, seeing is there a player there? And then they knew the final guys were on short. That's why the wall was able to go down and they could get a defuse. Mm -hmm. That info play is invaluable. And unfortunately, yeah. you know, when you queue with people that don't know a lot about the game, they'll just think, oh, I can go shoot people in the head. That's my job. Yeah, no, there's a lot more to a lot of these agents than what we give it credit for. There's not a lot going on for Scream in this round, though. As he gets shut down straight away, they're actually able to push on this. Soulcast has fallen as well. It's up to Eccles to try and hold the line, but he is being smoked out completely. First, the jet. Oh, gets one still. Of course, Eccles, you're just going to do that. No problem at all. Why the hell not? He goes and picks up the Bulldog, and Liquid is still going to go for this because there's plenty of time. It's a three versus three. They're trying to send the drone out on the side of BBL to get him some extra information. It's all going to come down to this timing again. The orb goes out. That's what Eccles was waiting for. He's going to try and sneak his way in. Checks out the corner first, being ever so careful. The jet smokes down, though. They need to be oh, on the edge of it. Eccles is taking some damage. He's on the hunt for more. Nice position from Aslan, though. He's going to start off strong. CNET to follow up. And that's a round secured for BBL on the A site. It's so crucial for BBL to get involved in this game early and stop Liquid from building up any momentum. That round win is going to put wind in their sails, but it's not over yet. Because Team Liquid took that 2-0 to zero and didn't lose a lot of players in the second round mm -hmm. due to the big play by Link, they've got a lot of money left over. Eccles has taken a judge, but that's not too much of a surprise. We've seen him <laughs> again and again playing towards Garage with it, but this time he's over on A short, another angle that allows you close-range duels and is probably... I mean, if you're pushing into double doors on a round where some of your opponents have weaker money, you expect a judge. Do you expect it on short? Probably not. Yeah, Eccles on the judge is something that I would be painfully not wanting to see in my games ever. So once you've been on the receiving end of that, it's ever so hard to deal with. Now, it's a fast push coming out here from BBL again. Cryptix is able to get one, but that's all he'll stand strong for. And this is nice. We're actually seeing entries come out strong here for BBL. Link decides to back away. He's going to take a few shots off with the Sheriff. Picks himself up a Vandal. And he's good. He's been smart here. He's had the idea that Kiro might try this. But how are they going to check it out? You don't want to directly push into it. You want him to make the mistake first. But he's not going to. He's just going to land the headies. Eccles will get him. That is a judge kill to be found. He'll upgrade to the Phantom. But how much more can he get? They try to line up. And this could be an opportunity for him. But CNED and Russ, they're the ones to find it. And they're the ones to push him back. This is going to be a 2-2. And BBL, at least on their attacking side, are going to start with... A little bit more than what we expected from them, given how their previous games had gone. And this is the thing, they can put up numbers, they can put up scores, but sometimes it's just the closing out part that they struggle with. Well, that's definitely it. When it comes to the later buy rounds as well, that's when you don't expect them to do too well. But I'm actually very happy with what they've been, man what they've been able to achieve, rather, because they've come back in, even up against the, the, the full buy, and destroyed early on. The first full buy going their way, the force buy as well. And now we come into round number five, where, again, it's going to be a mixed investment. Team Liquid have taken three marshals, if I saw that correctly, and one already falling. You know, out of all the players in this tournament, uh, f f out of the top five, two of them are players from Team Liquid. Link and Solkas, actually. is this the uh, Solkas is fifth, Link is second. And also, Link's KD is like a million miles above everyone else. He's got a 1.86. He just doesn't die. You say he just doesn't die. <laughs> oh no, this is not looking good for Liquid at all in this round. Echo's on the Bucky, not the judge this time. And he's just walking straight into C Ned. Yeah, they, well, what was it? Three marshals, a Bucky, and a sheriff that they had coming in. So it's definitely understandable when things don't quite go as cleanly as you'd hope. Moving into the next round. Uh, again, when you look over towards the Liquid side, because they took that lighter buy in the previous, they're able to get their full investment out. It'll be light armor on Eccles, but he has got mm -hmm. the operator back in his hands, and this is where danger could really be lurking around any corner if you're BBL. They know, though, that they're up against an operator. Remember, it's no longer like, oh, do they have a read on the economy? You just press tab, and you can read it right there in front of you. Yeah. So they know an op can come out, and if Eccles has that kind of cash, you know he has one. 
Yeah, we saw on one of the maps, right, from Liquid that Eccles was straying away from it a bit more. But I think sometimes with the operator, if you're feeling like you can't make those shots, right, you don't feel as confident with it, sometimes it's better to just go away from it. That's why sometimes when Mixel's not having a great game, Artis picks it up and Mixel just goes and plays off with the Phantom and gets a bit more up in their face with the chip. And talk about up in their face, Eccles didn't even have a chance. The moment he saw anyone, Rush delivers the headshot. The wall's gone up, the cage has gone down. Now the ult's going to come through from the Sova, but it's not going to connect with anyone just yet. They're missing quite a lot with this. Oh, that spray was not good from Rust. Not what we expect to see, but at least they shouldn't be punished for it. Screams alone and just opt out of it. Put another on the board for BBL. This is an absolutely insane early game for them, considering they didn't win the pistol as well. Yeah. Like, you'll see four to two score lines where I'm sat here going, yeah, but that's not really that good for the underdog if they won the pistol in the first buy. But this is literally, they've made it as hard as possible for themselves and are still coming in with a lead, a, a substantial one. Now the problem is they might be leading in rounds, but they're not leading in the ulti comp. There's four in play for Team Liquid. And as they come into this round, the ults can really help to bridge the gap of what they've got. From the looks of it there, they have full Cover phantoms to play down. around. Oh, no. Okay. I don't know if that's the UI or if it was just because we swapped, but they've got, <laughs> as I expected, it's why I was so surprised. why I was mentioning the Phantoms. I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know where they've got them, but apparently they do. No, they're coming in with weaker weapons, and that's what I'm talking about with the ult economy. That can help to bridge the gap that currently exists between them. Yeah. It's it a really shame. Can. It really is a shame Solkas doesn't have his, because his is the oh, big yeah. difference maker in a round like this. Could be. Especially if they group up, right? Can easily walk away with a couple of kills in yep. there. All it needs to be as well placed. In fact, they got the revive up as well. They can even lose someone and get some good information there. Mm. See, Link goes in for this early wall off. He wants to go and approach a bit of what might be happening towards C Long. But again, more focused towards B for now, and they have found success here. They just walk in no problems at all. The gamble pays off for BBL, and Liquid, they're just going to be forced back out of this. Okay, Paranoia goes forward though, and Scream and Link, they come at the same time. This is working out. Solgas as well on the judge. This is not ideal. Cena pops his ult and he goes down straight away. Kiro tries his best to hold on, but it's not going to be possible. Liquid are going to get a gu bunch of guns and they're going to get the round as well. That was huge, and that was all off the back of Eccles' Paranoia. Mm -hmm. Fantastic work, and you see why we mentioned time and time again that Omen is essential. There are literally, there's a 2% pick rate, and that's from uh, Vodafone Giants. If we exclude All them, right. nobody has picked the Brimstone in this tournament in group stage, mm. regardless of the map. And even then, Vodafone Giants only picked him once on Bind. Okay. Because the flash that you get from Omen is insane. His yeah. ultimate is useful, not maybe as useful oh, as Brimstone's, that. but still has its uses. But round to round, the impact that he brings is far greater. Yeah, the ultimate on Omen, right, is less used, but I also think when you can use it, it's just more like a surprise attack, right? It's yeah. like you like saw Angel having fun with it, for example, great, but you can mess around with it a bit more. For me, you rather have the skills that he has outside of the ultimate compared to having to build up into it. And the whole thing about the, the Omen ult is that a lot of the time it's just for info, info as well, right? Like you'll go into the back of a site and then cancel it because you get to just see around how many players are there and figure if you're going into a stack. Here's the ultimate from Solkas Ooh. going out. One kill for free. Spraying Ooh. down afterwards to CNED. Nade goes through. That could deal some good damage as well when a player is stuck in the corner. It blows up. And unfortunately, so does he. A shock dart to finish him off. But already the damage is done. That's a one-man hold. And he's just shut them down, cost them 30 seconds and two kills. And look at Eccles now, right? He's just patiently waiting. You can hear the spike going down, but he can wait for his teammates to come in. He's actually going to go, oh, oh, I thought it was him getting the kill then. But it was Scream. Now the spike's still been planted. Aslan's holding a really tight angle here. This could work out for him. Depends if Eccles is going to spot it out first or but he moves. It's all going to come down to time. And the teleport goes across. Russ is going to hear what's going on here. Now his position's known as well, though. Straight away, it's Scream that's going to push up forward and get on the hump with it all. And now he's slowed down as well. This is less than ideal, but he still delivers the headshot. This can still be a round one. Russ needs to deliver, but Cryptics, he just comes in, pre-fires the angle. It's no problem at all for him. And Liquid are going to even it up four to four. They had the info there because of Russ on where three players were, but Cryptics was left undetected. Right. He took a very slow rotate from C, shifting from the time that he hit the A side of spawn and just managed to get up behind them and catch them off guard in that one. 
uh, on the back of that, obviously tied up, is a decent position, but really they had no chance of getting here if Solcast fell. This was huge. Look how much time he delayed as well. The first, the second, and then he just waits. He's here a good, what, six seconds longer before he's eventually dealt with. And all that time, the long players are able to get themselves into a position where they can have early flanks and not just be boxed in. I can imagine Soulcast just laughing once he got that second kill as well because he knows yeah. damn well he should have been dead. 100%. There's no right. He had no right to it. <laughs> he's like, wait a second. I saw that guy while I went up for the ult. I even came back down, pulled my gun out and still killed him. <laughs> <laughs> You'll take it, eh, when it, when it happens. Oh, definitely. But still, it's close. BBL have shown us what they can do. The problem is when the pressure gets put on them, things often slow down. Yeah. We've seen it across a few of these games. They will cover. Ooh, okay. Scream yep, going in with it for now. He's ready to just spray away. Got the first, that's the benefit. Look, the fade away. Oh, oh, they saw him. He was spotted by the arrow, so the spray just continued and he ran right into it. That is absolutely yeah. huge. Eccles now trying to push forward. The paranoia comes out. It's actually going to land perfectly. And it even leaves Solkus untouched. So he's oh. able to get that kill. Probably would have been dead otherwise after that whiff. Leaving all the pressure onto uh -oh. Jet. But that doesn't land. Eccles had to get it. The blast pack couldn't even be detonated in time. Very quick shot by CNED. Really quick shot from CNED there. I think for Solkus, he was um, a little bit too happy to try and get in that second kill. Should have maybe waited a little bit. It went to the 1v1, but still Eccles managed to get the job done. And I think the main thing there is that BBL, they came so close to it. Had Scream not gone down, it would be a whole different scenario. But Lego, he was well ready for it. Must have been some good communication from his team. Yeah, well, definitely on the first guy, but uh, it was his recon dart he threw through to the, or he shot, I suppose, through to the back left, that as Scream came out of the invulnerability, it connected on him just as he was coming around the corner. So he, not only did he have the info, he saw it. He was like, He's oh, like, this guy's about to peek me. Let me just tra transfer wait for it. <laughs> Preemptive transfer over to him and an easy headshot. That was nuts. It was just sheer timing. If Scream activated his invulnerability, half a second later, he would have got that kill. Still, the round went to Liquid, and they find themselves in the lead, but just by one round here. This is where we were worried, James, that if Liquid could manage to start building up some momentum a little bit later on. I just want to touch on quickly the early setup they had. You'll see Cypher was immediately over towards the middle area. Ryan was supporting B in case of a faster play, because the camera he has in position allows him... It doesn't allow him to see all the way down long, but... Because he's got a tripwire there as well, he's confident in playing a very passive angle. Yeah. Now, but the problem is, because they're stacked up and they're going to push this all at once, they're not going to get the info till it's too late. Tiro trying to sneak in here through the mid doors. He's having a look up. Will he be able to stay alive? Link's found another heady, of course. That's just the way it goes. Cena just sat in the smoke, hoping, waiting, trying to find some additional players to go and hunt down here. But Liquid, they're going to take their time with this one. They're going to wait for things to fade away. They're going to group up. And this is where it's scary. When you have to deal with a Liquid to get themselves ready for this, it's 5v4. And it's so quiet for BBL. They're just like, okay, which way? What's happening? Where's it all going? Now it comes in. The paranoia, it does land. They're all completely surrounded. Scream starts things off. They're all just over the site. BBL don't stand a chance. And a retake from Liquid is just so successful time and time again. They time the paranoia incredibly well, and once they're ready, they just activate onto it, while BBL are given that false sense of security. See, the thing about Liquid is they do not play this map technically, as would be agent composition-wise anyways. They don't play it the way that I suppose it should be. I don't want to say should because yeah, it's so early in the game, yet. but it's the optimal, the thing that theory optimal at the moment is to have a Sova. They trade out the Sova in this lineup in order to have the Reina in play. Yep. Now, on a map like this, typically, just analytically, Sova brings a lot of value. He can go send his drone down, for example, there where the camera was very passive on C. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have it where it can be destroyed instantly early round and you just get no info from it. But that's where the likes of a drone or a recon dart can be you so useful. But they don't have that. Okay, there's a wall and a res used up early on because of that early peak by Link yeah. through the smoke. Now they're able to play very confidently. The thing about Liquid, and G2 do this as well, whenever they see that their opponent has a res up on the attacking side, 
they just go they go for an early pick everywhere to try and get that fight to get the kill because you don't want to allow them to push a site lose a player but win the site and then get the res up yeah. safely you want to make them use use that up early on so that in the late round all the kills you find matter make them spend it up make it become costly for them mm -hmm. take away their game plan if any bad stuff does happen this is so sneaky by screen you can start pushing on this once he starts to hear what's going down. That's exactly what he does. He finds the first kid on Takiro. Slow put on the floor. They're trying to push it through Garage, but what can you do at this point? Again, the paranoia goes out. Scream finds himself the second. Zenith's got to be careful, and that's a nice one onto Eccles at least. Aslan's gone down from Link. Huge advantage for Liquid here. Scream's quite low on health, though. They found their way into the B site. CNED can get the spike down. But Scream is not finished yet. The revive comes in on Eccles as well. That's five liquid members all against CNED. He manages to avoid the first shot. They're pushing him from all sides. Second oh. one delivered the headshot. This is nice, but it's not good enough. Scream was just on a rampage that round. Straight away getting aggressive at the very early part of it all. And now we're seeing a 7-4 scoreline. Could they be looking at 8? This is not looking good once again here for BBL, despite the strongest start. Yeah, the 4-2 to two that they got even with losing the pistol. But again, when it comes to the later buy rounds, when Liquid get that ball rolling, it's so difficult to keep them beaten back down. And with 5 in a row... It's really time for BBL to answer up. They've got to stop Liquid or it's just going to be too damn late. A really good attempt by CNET, but it was, it was too far gone oh. at that point anyways. The headshot they got on the cryptic set, though. That was a little bit of tastiness. Didn't fully see him with it. Link again, having another great game. A few more deaths than last time. I'd not give him that, but in general. I don't think Link gets enough credit on this roster, man. Well, he is the second highest rated player in this tournament at the moment. Just falling. Actually, now third because of uh, the game that Zipan played. But okay. out of the teams that haven't, you know, finished, finished their games, the games, these two yeah, and the yeah. next two. He is the, uh, coming into today, he was the second highest rated player. Because like, everyone's talking about Scream. Everyone's talking about Echoes, right? Oh, yeah. oh, oh Scream. He's this monster. Oh, he does it again. Look at the mechanical skills. He's got the paranoia from his teammate to help him out. Echoes is there to get the next kill on the board. And BBL, they feel like they had a chance. But that's just been ripped from them slowly but surely. Ooh, Echo's missing that shot. I thought he would have landed that. So that's solid from Russ. Might help him out a little bit here. Scream keeping himself up in window, though. They're still trying to push on BBL. A few shots fired off. Player on short. Solkas needs to be aware of it. I wouldn't be poking and reloading. Oh, here he goes. Satchels himself down, but he sent that far too far, but still gets the kill, of course. No problems. He's like, you know what? I just wanted to use it. I just wanted to have fun with my gun, you know? Rocket my way through life. So funny thing about Scream in this line. Oh, hold on. Russ has picked up Solkus. Now that site's open for them to take, but there's already movement towards C. I think, it, yeah, looking and see Russ is just full rotating through spawn. Oh, no, he's going through garage. You don't have control. Why are you rotating there? There's so little time, actually. It. I guess he needs to go that way for the time, oh. but he dies. That's it. Round's over. I, yeah, I don't think he would have made it up long. <laughs> Cryptics. Good work. 8-4, Liquid. BBL really felt like they had a chance in that round. I'm trying to think. Uh, at 12 seconds when he runs through, I, f I feel it would have been very close even going through garage. Right, like, switch chat, do your thing. Point. Get onto an empty server. Test how Run long the time it takes, down yeah. and test how long it's going to take I, for us. My, my worry then, either way, my criticism will change. Why are they maintaining control of sight when they know if time is that low, you can't take a fight? There's no way. Maybe don't he have hadn't worked control. out that he couldn't. And by the time it was yeah. called, he was already in the site. You know, it's like a little time. It's messy either way. That. But I, ideally, if he's going to go through garage, his teammate should have been there to help him regardless exactly. to try. Yeah. I know what you mean. It's, it's messy, but look, 8-4 at the end of the day. It was a decent half for Liquid. They're going to be happy. The problem for me, Banks, is just how many rounds they found in a row there. All that momentum now built up. And what happens when you give Liquid confidence and they go to the attack inside? It's the minor the details that it comes down to there for BBL. There was a few swing rounds as well. Look, at there's a couple of clutch rounds that could have gone their way. Mm -hmm. So despite it being 8-4, the problem here I find for BBL, though, is that Liquid grouping up and taking the fight like this to them. Do they really match up individually? 
Can they even match up individually? We need Aslan to come back to that form we saw on day one. Mm. How's he doing in this? I didn't check up on his score. I'm not sure. Uh, well, you know, we'll, we'll see it after this round, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, definitely nowhere near day one performance. Yeah. And Aslan was so good. You remember every time it felt like he was so... We literally had the thing where we were like, Aslan's big away. Because he yeah. was just He's shredding the immovable object. Like 1v3-ing every time they pushed into sight. And then it's it's cooled down. You're against Liquid. He has excuses. I'll give him that. Who did they, they played G2 in the first game, though. Yeah. Yeah, so... That's what I mean. He was doing it against them. This is nice, though, from Liquid. They just wall off one side. They run all the way around. The spike's going to get planted. Lego, though, has found the opening kill. The paranoia gets put down, and CNED's able to do some work. Aslan's got involved as well. This is less than ideal. They're trying to break through on it. Scream just playing on the edge. They need to be oh so careful. They're on that spike already. Time to shine. He's going to get the heal on go. He's delivering headshots, but that's all he's able to do because the spike got defused, and the round still went their way. Despite their best efforts, Liquid could not push into the site to actually hold on to the round. We've seen every aspect of Reyna from Scream uh, so far in this map alone. The overheal, especially on a pistol round. And I said before, Important. we saw Scream pick up armor, and I was saying, well, most of the time you'll actually see them with a ghost. And obviously, he had the ghost this time, but the armor as well. It had been picked up from one of his teammates. But look at that. He's constantly healing up. Every yep. time you take damage, you're back up on full health or, and full armor. And we saw the disengage on Long, where he was able to hold the left side, take a fight, and immediately bail out once he found the kill which is usually after one bullet with a god of one taps. Yeah, his, his aim is pretty damn ridiculous. It's almost as good as mine. He's getting there. Someday. I might, I might give him a, a lesson or two. Do you hear that? You just, play, you just play online chess. It's what you do. Speed chess, you know, you gotta, you got to be very accurate which one you pick, where you move it to. That's how you actually aim. Please warm stop. Up. Because you warm up your mind as well, Banks. You want to warm up your aim and yeah. your mind. Warming up your mind. That must take a long time, Mitch. <laughs> I've been doing it 22 years. I'll tell you when it works. <laughs> One day it will kick in. <laughs> Nicely done by CN, at least for the first pick. He's had the information as well that a couple more could have crossed over. Right, 40 seconds left. It's yeah, time to go very forward. slow. They can't go anywhere else. And there's a two-man stack on A. A three-man, excuse me. Cover, the gem being sneaky on the map up above. Ready to just swing around. Great paranoia. I mean, that oh. should be it. When they push through, they're already known to be here. The rotates are on their way. It's going to be four players holding off against them. <laughs> Aslan is tempting fate poking out into that, though. Eventually, he will go down. But how much more can they get done? CNED, he's just holding short, expecting someone to come here. He might just need to have a look down. From that position, he can get involved. He needs to back his teammates up. Finally, Liquid do push in. He jumps himself across, and well, Lego luckily is there to get the rest of the damage on the board and find the final two kills. 8-6 now, but Liquid will have weapons in their hands. This is going to be the test of BBL. What can they get done in a situation like this? So patient. He sat on his box. See Ned in the corner. <laughs> it was unfortunately he decided to switch positions over as well. Yeah. Then he, like, he was in midair and needed his teammate to save his life. The damage done overall by Team Liquid was, it was okay <laughs> in that round. The jet dash away. Here's the full buy, though. Liquid have got all their weapons out. Yeah. BBL about to face a big task. They've won the pistol. This first full buy round, well, if they win it, it's pretty much 8 8 because Liquid will take an eco. And then they're really back in the game. Now, does anyone poke long? You've got both of them looking towards short. Scream entry fragging, Soulcast backing him up. Look at the distance as well. It's perfect for anyone they do poke up. And they're not careful. This is, yeah, what is this? Oh, BBL. Oh, BBL. This is not how you play it. There is another part to this bomb site. It's called A-Long. It's completely ignoring it. Even the play up above. I mean, you're in the same position as last they, time. Obviously, they predict it. They didn't even have a read, though. There was no information to say, like, oh, yeah, there's definitely one short or something like this. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm baffled. Maybe one of them thought the other one was looking. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, CNN's exclusive job there is just to watch down towards short. He is the one holding it yeah. very wide and very aggressive. But he saw his teammate in front of him, so surely Cena can look for long from the top of those boxes. Yeah. Just, I don't know. Yeah, bad, bad communication there on the BBL side. That's uh, not what you want to see, but it looks like the rest of the teammates will save. Liquid can just happily go on the hunt for him here. 
Even Liquid are probably surprised, like, you're not retaking this in any way? You already decided to just give up? Okay. Especially because they won the pistol round, right? It's not like they physically can't invest coming into yeah. the next round over on BBL. The possibilities are there for them to at least get a decent buy. And they saved over weaker weapons. Link pushed his way down, but not enough into C to actually go find anyone. Three weapons saved across, though. Liquid just got that previous round to bring it to nine to six. And yeah, this was just so... The timing, as I'm just like, oh, yeah, I should check long. Oh, no. Oh, it's screen. And then Solcast tries to react to, to CNED, and CNED just ends up walking straight into more firefights. Scream currently top fragging. Looks like he's having a field day at the moment. BBL have gone for a stack towards the A site early on. Three players in position. Makes sense when Liquid's applied so down. much pressure to this A site over yeah. and over again. They're doing it again. Heavily stacked up. The difference is they're holding for any map control mm -hmm. being seized out by BBL. And it actually makes a lot of sense that they would go for it at this point. Oh. If, especially with that kill. Surely now someone pushes. Yeah, you need to now react on this. They've got long control. They're coming up. They're realizing that nobody from Liquid is here. So BBL now might actually have a read that it's not going to be the A site. They see the eye on the map over towards B. And it's time to move. The A player's on a flank through bottom mid. And that could be huge. You can see oh the timing. No. Look, they're not even looking Soul for it at the Cass. moment. Absolutely no idea. Solkus is going to be backstabbed, but then he comes around, checks it, finds a player in mid air, sees a second, and that's all the info now to play with for Liquid. He throws out the grenade. It's not going to connect. Still, he lands the headshot. Oh, this is perfect timing there for Solkas. Pushes him away. Great work. Only Aslan remains, but it's not for long. Such a solid round from Liquid. Even when it looks like it's not going to go their way, BBL just a little bit too slow to react on everything that's happening. Like you pointed out, right? The eyes on the map, you can see what's going on. And they were just so slow to move further forward. Now with Liquid back in the driver's seat, this is where we do get very worried for yeah. BBL. Luckily, they saved over those weapons in the other round, right? So that, again, they can come in with an investment. But then... All that economy disappears, goes completely out the window, and Team Liquid could be looking at a solid way. 12 rounds if they win this one right here. The old doubt from CNED. He's not got a primary weapon. What I don't like is that he doesn't have anything. Like, uh, usually if you're going to go for the Jet Ult, I like you at least have like a ghost or something mm -hmm. to back you up. Especially like even a Frenzy, because you, you can tag players with it yeah, frenzy, and I'm, not I'm, kill them. I'm fully down for a Frenzy right if you get in there. Get up close and personal. Mm -hmm. Rate of fire on that's very impressive. Oh, here we go, Soulcast. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't looking the right way, but he still gets the kill. He does die either way, but they've got the site under their control. Slow comes out. Link should now know that there's someone's pushing, and he wasn't ready for it. Aslan, there we go. That's what we wanted to see from him. He does manage to get two. He stops the spike being planted. Now screaming the 1v2. Needs to get himself healed up if that's possible. Just needs to get that opening kill. Recon's not going to spot him out, though. You can see the spike. It's in his sights. If they push out into it, oh, damage taken to him. He's very low. 25 yeah. health. This should be a very easy cleanup. He's got to hit the headshots as BBL swing around. They're going to look to move a little bit closer before they do. The smoke down. Not going to help him out a whole lot. Needs to close in that distance if he wants to be picking up that spike. 20 seconds left. Yeah, Decision timing. time. And look at the look at the setup here from them. Surely you do 25 damage when he pushes through. <laughs> See if you're open a totem pole like that, essentially, you got to be able to do it. <laughs> yeah, the body you, you'd hope so. Yet somehow he just walked up. Ding, ding. Yeah, oh, what, I, what? I, I could see it happening. I could see the day, but no. It's not going to happen, so BBL will at least secure a little bit more money for themselves. They'll be able to get another round of port. But it always feels like, in a situation like this, even if BBL start mounting rounds, it almost feels like they're just moments away from disaster. Like you're living on a fault line, waiting for that earthquake of liquid to shake up your world. You're living on the edge, right? That's the problem. We spoke about Aslan. He's certainly having Shadows. a bit more impact than yesterday. Some days can be hit and miss. Oh. Really deep recon dart. Took my while to react to it. We'll give away some information. Aslan again, though. Took a lot of damage. Has to fall back, but at least he's got the opener. Solkas. Now out of it for this one. Eccles has fallen as well. So Liquid not starting off strong here. Link with the operator, though. Might find them 
a way back in. He gets the revive onto the Razor as well. The Sova ult's popping off, though. They need to avoid this. They cannot afford for anyone to go down at it. And he got very close by the looks of it. So now we've put this into a four versus four. Still doable here for Liquid. The A site firmly under the control of BBL. Aslan lost all of his shield from the first engagement, though. And Liquid, they're just biding their time, trying to sell a bit of a fake without actually doing anything. They're just trying to bide the time, right, and say, okay, look, we are going elsewhere. We're not going to go and hit the A site. This is something Liquid have done a couple times so far, is wait and hope that BVL try to get aggressive for an information play. Yeah. It's something that works very well against the likes of G2 and against the likes of a Team Liquid as well, because they love to do that. But it's not offered up, and eventually they've got to make their own opportunities. A big rotate back over towards B when they realize that this is possibly stacked up on A. But the rotates can be quick. They can be here in just oh. a second. With 13 seconds left, the plan has to come in. This is very dangerous. Screen oh no. falls, opens up the angle down middle. Link misses the shot. They need to get this spike down. Link Link not able to get a thing done, and a 3k for Aslan as the spike eventually goes in. It is going to be a 3v2. Advantage for BBL. Now just leaving Soulcast to make the clutch happen. He's been spotted as well, and this should be the end of it. The smoke in play, the headshot to seal this round. Up nice and tight, an 8 for BBL. Rush came up huge there at the end as well. Really solid from BBL in that round. Even with the revive coming back in and it turning into a 4v4 when they certainly had the numbers advantage, they still held strong. That last minute B hit wasn't going to work out. I think the big problem for Liquid there is that they didn't get that wall up to keep... You know when they like to push into B, they wall off the left side? Yeah. Because they didn't get that down, it just left it far too open. Their game plan was kind of halted where it was. Yeah, and they've, I mean, that opens up a lot more map control that they have yeah. to cover. So every fight they take then is basically a 1v1 while they try to get that spike down. Cover going out. Too many angles, not enough players. The old cell are in play for Liquid. Omen, Reyna, and Cypher. They know there's a res in play over towards the BBL side. And when that's in play on the defensive side, you generally... Wait, wait. BBL of four-man stack day long. They've only got Cypher towards this side of the map. They're just thinking, Liquid, you keep hitting A-Log. We're just going to stick here, everyone here. But this could be the undoing of them. Due to the slow rounds by Liquid, it might even be an okay idea. Look, look at this. They've got the info now because they pushed up on A-Log, having the players there to back them up if that player fell. Now there's three of them here on C. That is so proactive from BBL, and they might get the reward. At least they do, having the right stack. Now they've just got to win the fights. And Aslan, he's doing it again. Taking down Soulcast. Link tries to trade it back. Players are dropping left, right, and center. And for now, it's favoring Liquid by far. That turned around so quickly. A 2K from Cryptics, and Link gets involved to bring us over into a I one versus exactly three where. clutch. And now they even have the info. Oh no, CNED. He did not want that Cypher ult to go off then. He gets finished off by Cryptics, and now we're at 11 to 8. BBL were trying to mount a couple of rounds together, but Liquid, they changed up the game. They decided to stay away from A right when BBL decided to enforce a stronger defense towards it. And despite having a good chance here at C, look how many players were in the site. Aslan started off real strong. It still wasn't possible, because Link, he's back to his old tricks again. Heady's left, right, and center. Oof. And Cryptus getting that ult and just ensured they'd have good information to ensure that two versus one wouldn't be turned against them, right? And that's a perfect time to use a Cypher ult. Two versus one certainly losable. Getting that just info that he's close or he's coming from this direction just can ease your mind a bit more. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely. You don't want to allow him to get all those kills. God damn it. <laughs> oh, my son. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, you don't want to allow it to go too far back over into the you know, this favor, right? Especially when you're up against a jet who was an operator. You want to know where that op is. You don't want to just get picked apart. Definitely not. And here we go. The BXQ we keep talking about. Wall up the left, head towards the right, take full control, plant out in the open. You know you've got it covered and look at Eccles already. Pushed out and they might line up for him and they do. Two headshots delivered. Three players down for BBL. Only the Cypher and Jet remain. Cena did get a kill. The Cypher's walking straight in. Scream, is he going to see it? Oh, oh, oh uh, that one tap, please. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that was potentially awkward. And the wall's fallen, but it's well in their control. Liquid in a great spot. And <laughs> Cryptic is like, what? What was that? What, what, what are you trying to do? 
Extreme finds him in the end either way. 12th round secured. And Liquid one round away from getting the map pick of BBL. We thought they had a game plan going into it, knowing how strong Liquid usually are on this map. Remember, this was BBL's pick. And they've, again, BBL, they're getting rounds, Mitch. They're looking like a team that can contend at this level, but they just can't get an actual win. Well, that's always going to be a problem, isn't it? Now, for BBL, I think this scoreline is pretty fantastic. The only problem for them is they've been finding these rounds early, right, within the first six. And that tells you that it's down to that early scrappy economy, but when it comes down to having a, a diverse either attack or defense, mm -hmm. one that your opponents can't read and get an idea of how you're playing, that they're good. But once their opponents have that time to start analyzing, okay, this is how they play this part of the map, and this is what they like to do, they're very readable, very predictable. Well, let's, pre sorry, go ahead. No, that's right, but let's look at this, right, BBL's results. 13-3 uh -huh. yesterday on bind against Nip, not less, not really good. 14-12 against Nip on Ascent was looking pretty strong. This game here, okay, this was not over just yet when it comes to it, but then against G2, 13-10 on Haven, and then they had the 13-9. So they're getting a good amount of rounds off some of these top teams. It's just, yeah. it's not like they're just being rolled over, right? They're not getting 13-0, 13-3'd every game, so... You can see what they're trying to do. They just need a bit of refining. A tournament like this for someone like BBL is obviously a potential to make a little bit of cash, but also the... Fi oh, hold on. We've got a push coming in, and we'll talk about it in a second. Liquid swinging on through and looking to take this one right here and now. Cryptic's got the opening. Another coming the way of Scream, and that puts them way ahead as the spike is due to go down pretty damn soon. And that Omen sure. ult used by Echoes them. Upset them, confused them left them in a vulnerable position. BBL in their last round. Can't check all the corners, can't look everywhere. The invulnerability from Scream, and he ends it with a final two kills. 13-8, and Liquid managed to take the win on the opening map. It was BBL.